、いい正解。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 94. Ambiguity. During the Jade Rabbit Festival of the Ding capital, there would always be countless number of females that would be abducted by kidnappers yearly. If the abductees were male children, they would be in a much better position, as they would be sold to faraway families that were unable to bear children to be their sons. If they were female children or young females, they would be miserable. As those that do not have good looks would be passed around the brokers and sold to big families to become low ranked maids, and those who looked good would be worse off than the normal looking ones. They might be sold to troops or to brothels, or perhaps be auctioned off after being taught for a few years how to be a plaything for some rich people. Also, among these females, there were some that came from big families, but to the kidnappers, there was no separations between backgrounds. Who cared if you were a young lady of a big family or a commoner? Once one landed in the hands of the kidnappers, everyone was the same. Shen young lady was abducted by kidnappers? In the room, Ji Yu Shu suddenly stood up and walked to and fro for two steps, showing some worried expressions. Shen young lady looked not bad and her bearing is extraordinary. One fear that once landed into the hands of the kidnappers, She would definitely be sold off. Even though I also like young lady Xiao Yao, but one do not wish Shen young lady to become such a young lady. Third Z older brother, should we go and save her? Zhao Yang snorted disdainfully at Ji Yu Shu's words. Are you alright? With Shen Miao's means and methods, how is it possible to be kidnapped? Moreover, about the kidnappers, they will only pick single young ladies or lost children to abduct. But Shen Kaiyu and Shen Zin were not far from Shen Miao. Those kidnappers are not fools, why would they specifically pick such a big thorn? Moreover, Shen Miao's looks are not at the level of national grace and divine fragrance, it would not be worth it. These words were actually not wrong as when the kidnappers abduct people, they would take advantage of others' inattention. Even if one were to abduct and sell official families' young ladies, They would also choose a time where there was no one around that young lady, but hearing from those who inquired information, at that time Shen Miao was by the Wanli Lake, and when there was a commotion in the crowd, then the kidnappers took action. Even though it sounded easy, but if one were to be discovered, one would not be able to escape as there were so many people around. For such a dangerous thing, if one were to do it for one with the level of national grace and divine fragrance, it would be worth doing it. But Shen Miao was after all a little young lady, and even though she looked not bad, it was not a level where one would lose their sense of logic. The most important thing was that at that time Shen Kaiyu and Shen Zin were not far away, and since ancient times, the evildoers followed the guidelines of fear the strong and bully the weak. So obviously, knowing that Shen Zin's entire family was looking, it was not a good move to anger them. So, why would the kidnappers find trouble for themselves? For one to do such a dangerous, not profitable, and unworthy transaction, would only be if the kidnapper was one who had a bad brain. Ji Yu Shu said with a sudden understanding, so it is to say that it is not the work of kidnappers? Then who would it be? It is obviously targeting Shen young lady. Could it be related to Prince Yu's residence? As he spoke, he shook his head. Prince Yu's people also did not know that the elimination of the entire household was related to Shen Miao. Could it be Shen family's people? Heard from the grapevine that the Shen family is at odds, could it have been done by the other households? Zi Jing Xing, who was quietly sitting at the side, stood up, it is them, them. Zhao Yang tensed up in an instant and looked towards Zi Jing Xing, they have already discovered, should not have. Zi Jing Xing shook his head. Previously, I waited for them to take action, but there were no activities. Now, one u n d e r s t a n d they might have known about the secret chambers and used unknown methods to know that Shen Miao was present. Our identities are not yet exposed as they intend to find it out from Shen Miao's lips. Let the Moyu Army's secret division come out to search along the lake. The more people there are, the more the interferences will be, so they should have left far away. Zi Jing Xing said deeply. He had already put away the casual look he usually had on, and his solemn look was not like of a youth of 17 or 18 of age, but there was an indescribable chill to it. It is not very good to mobilize the Moyu army now. Zhao Yang said with a frown, 
Now there are too many people watching you in the Ding capital and if the head is aware of it, one fear that the troubles would not be small. Why not let people guard the city doors and early tomorrow morning let your residence's people secretly search in the city. It is not good to beat the grass and scare the snake. Still, wait for a night? Ji Yushu jumped up, Shen Yang lady's life would be gone if one waited for a night. Ji Yushu was after all young and impetuous and also rather appreciated her worth, and was unlike Jia Aoying who already had a politician's cruelty and mercilessness. In some ways, Ji Yushu still retained the precious sincerity and innocence of a youth. Jia Aoying was aggravated, with the situation as it is already, and you are still thinking of Shen Miao. If one is not careful, our identities will all be exposed. Send the secret division out to search now. Zi Jing Xing coldly said, I do not wish to say it a third time. Third Zi. Zhao Yang looked at him, Do you want to destroy the entire plan because of a girl? Do not forget what you previously said, Zhao Yang, be mindful of your position. Zi Jing Xing suddenly snapped and his brows slightly wrinkled as the darkness in his peach eyes surged making them look darker than the night of the Ding capital. The sudden wrathful expression startled Jia Aoying. When Ji Yushu saw this, he quickly smoothed things over. Today's events were so sudden and no one had expected them, but the situation might not be that bad so let us think about what is going on. Zi Jingxing was silent for a while before he said, It is not for anyone but for them to take such drastic actions in my territory, it really made one feel uncomfortable. Since they have the guts to come, tonight they will have a taste of what it means leaving but not returning. Due to the surging crowd along the Wanli Lake, the cheers and laughter slowly drowned the rest of the noise. The matter of an official's daughter did not seem to cause many waves, and this was because the Shen family did not spread it out. As if it was spread out they fear that people would still be busy watching the grand celebration. The Jade Rabbit Fairy had finished dancing leaving the males into a daze while the females were secretly cursing her as a vixen. The gigantic Jade Rabbit Lantern was made from snow white silk and was painted with a thick layer of grease. It depicted the scenes of the Jade Rabbit having fun. This was all lined with the flickering candles which were slowly floating around the Wandley Lake. As the people cheered, they ran up to the lake to set off their handmade lanterns. They had written their wishes for the year, and rolled them into little pieces of paper before putting them inside the lantern and gently placing this in the water. Snow started to fall a little from the skies, and since the Wan Li Lake was lit up by the bright lights from the fireworks in the sky, for a moment of time, it made one unclear which one was the skies and which the water. This kind of beautiful scenery of brightly lit fireworks was seldom seen even in previous year's Jade Rabbit Festival. There were a few sightseeing boats floating on the middle of the lake, and normally the rich would book the exquisite boats to entertain, but no one knew who was inside those few sightseeing boats as the lake was filled with lanterns, making the boats unnoticeable. An unlit sightseeing boat was leisurely floating downstream of the Wanli Lake. It was less crowded at the downstream as the lanterns floated towards this direction. From afar, it seemed as though the lanterns were surrounding the boat but the more it floated downstream, the more it went further away from the city center and there were gradually less people until at the end, there was almost no one. Shin Miao was sitting in the innermost room of this sightseeing boat, coldly looking at the two people in front. In the dark drawing room, there was a small oil lamp lit. A piece of rag was tied around Shen Miao's mouth and her hands and legs were tied so tightly that it would not loosen no matter how one struggled. The two people on the boat were wearing linen and looked very strange. The skinny and tall one stood at the head of the boat and took a look before walking into the cabin. He then nodded to the shorter one and said, All right, there is no one here. The short one laughed and pulled out the rag that was inside Shen Miao's mouth and said, Shen young lady, there is no one here so you better not shout. We still have energy to kill you and escape if you were to shout. Shen Miao's eyes slightly moved but she did not speak. These people were going against the flow as the boat drifted downstream. Shen Xin and the rest would only search for her in the surroundings, 
and would not think that she would be in the center of the lake in full view of everyone, just now when she stood at the stone platform waiting for Shen Kaiyu to return, she was grabbed from behind and her mouth and nose were covered. Both actions were too fast and she did not have time to react when she was already tied in the boat. Seeing that Shen Miao was not speaking, the short one appeared to be quite satisfied. The skinny tall one walked over and sat opposite her with a dark gaze. Shen Young Lady, a straightforward person does not resort to insinuations. We brought you here to inquire one thing from you. The skinny and tall one had a unique temperament which was not like ordinary gangsters. He said, you went over to Prince Yu's residence's secret chambers that day. Shin Miao's eyes flashed. When she was abducted, she did think about many possibilities. Perhaps it was second or third household's people. Perhaps it was Shen Yuan or the old subordinates of Prince Yu. She even also connected to Fu Ziyu Yi. But she did not expect that the person who came was for the reason of that secret room. Those secret chambers secret was only known to Zi Jinxing and Zhao Yang, and most likely no one knew of it so could it be that Fu Ziyu Yi was aware of it a few years ahead of time? But since the other side had come prepared, they would be clear of the ins and outs of her background so Shen Miao did not bother to heed and replied, yes. That day eldest brother was dealing with matters in Prince Yu's residence and I waited in the tea room, and inadvertently found those secret chambers so one went to take a look out of curiosity. Facing the two of them, the short one said, you should have met someone else in the secret chambers. Who is that person? Shen Miao's fingers slightly shrinked. It was not because of the secrets in the secret chambers or the things inside. But it turned out to be about the ones inside it. Zi Jingxing and Zhe Aoyang. These people were targeting Zi Jingxing and Zhe Aoyang. Shen Miao's mind very quickly worked. It was presumed that these people knew that there were other people than her in the secret chambers that day, but did not know who that person was. Perhaps Zi Jingxing and Zhe Aoyang were hiding something. If she were to speak of it, Zi Jingxing's and Zhe Aoyang's secret would be exposed. She looked puzzled at the other person. Someone else? That skinny and tall one looked at her viciously, Shen young lady, do not play tricks in front of us. That day you entered the secret chambers and we believed that it was by chance, but the things in the secret chambers had been taken away. Who did you meet in the secret chambers? Say it and one would leave your life be. Shen Miao stared at him but her mind was quickly calculating. It was because of her previous lifetime that she came to know about the secret chambers in Prince Yu's residence. Thus in these people's eyes she could only accidentally have found out about the existence of the chambers. Perhaps these people were also investigating some matters but did not know which specific person they were after and Zi Jingxing and Jia Yang were the people they were looking for. She shook her head, that day when I entered the secret chambers there was no one else inside. As for the things that you were talking about, I did not see them either. The people that you were talking about must have already left. Not possible. The skinny tall one looked at her and suddenly a cruel smile appeared in his face. Shen young lady, since you are not willing to say, then one would let you suffer. When the voice just finished, the eyes of the short one lit up and one of his hands reached out to touch Shen Miao's face, and there was a look of immorality appearing on his face as he said, Little beauty's skin is smooth and fair, why not serve this older brother, perhaps one can remember. Finishing, he reached out to Shen Miao's buttons. If you really touch me, I will commit suicide by biting my tongue and you will not be able to inquire anything. Shen Miao faintly said, when I lose my innocence, my heart would be like ashes and under such despair, do you think that you have the opportunity to get it out of me? When those words were spoken, the short one's hands suddenly stopped and he turned to look at the skinny tall one. The skinny tall one stared at Shen Miao before asking, you know who it is? Shen Miao gently smiled. Perhaps I can remember. The short one was somewhat flabbergasted and the skinny and tall one's eyes were gloomy. Perhaps Shen Miao's overly calm attitude caught them somewhat unaware, or perhaps they were surprised that Shen Miao could turn the situation around and threaten them. There was no female that did not care about her innocence, but Shen Miao's attitude was that of a hoodlum on the streets. Correct, if Shen Miao really knew who the people in the secret chambers were, 
if they were to touch her Shen Miao would fully hate them, and would never reveal the truth in her entire life. Shen Miao's gaze was slightly cold, everyone would have their own weaknesses. Facing these two people who seems needed to must know who the person in the secret chambers was, and now she was perhaps the only person in the world who knew about it. If she was just a delicate official's daughter, it was certain she would speak the truth when scared, but unfortunately she was Empress Shen who before fought in the inner palace. What do you want? The short one did not touch her again and had an amiable look on, say who that person is and we will all agree to you. His tone of voice was like one which was coaxing a child. Shen Miao did not even blink as she asked, who are you? The two of them were startled for a moment before the skinny and tall one sneered. What good does it do for you knowing who are we? Perhaps I would be able to remember who that person is. Shen Miao gently smiled as she looked at him. You are prolonging the time. Shen Miao did not express an opinion. The short one quickly stood up and without even thinking he gave a slab to Shen Miao. It seemed that his patience had exhausted as he said, smelly bitch. Since you would not do this the easy way, then we will do it the hard way. Do not talk any more nonsense with her. Shin Zin's army is outside guarding and we cannot get out, so first bring her back and when we return. His smile became somewhat twisted, naturally one will have a way for her to speak the truth. He leaned over and touched Shen Miao's face with his disgusting hand, little girl. This grandfather just took the trouble to treat you well but still you do not wish to live, then do not blame others. Shen Miao's dark gaze got cold and suddenly she raised her hand and used a knife to pierce towards the other's face. The short one was caught off guard, Shen Miao was able to draw blood from his face and blood continuously flowed down. One did not know when the ropes behind Shen Miao's arms and legs were grinded apart. She was used to hiding a dagger in her sleeves and it was a surprise that there was a use for it today. After she brandished it around for a bit, she ran out of the boat screaming, help. But when running to the hatch of the ship, she was stopped by a violent force and threw onto the ground. Her entire back was knocked onto a wooden table on the boat and it was so painful, that she sucked in a breath of cold air and the boat even rocked for a few times. Her reaction was still fast as she immediately got up and ran out. The skinny tall one sneered and kicked her knees and a bitter pain burst out. Shen Miao recovered to her senses and reached out with the dagger in her hands to stab the person's eyes. The skinny and tall one jumped in shock and dodged to the side to avoid her sharp dagger as he cursed poisonous woman and snatched the dagger from her hands. Shen Miao endured the pain in her legs and climbed to the cabin windows and jumped down without even blinking. Want to run? The skinny tall one coldly laughed and did not hesitate to throw the dagger in his hand over and straight into Shen Miao's calf. Even though it did not penetrate a deep, a dark red trace started forming quickly on the lake. Shen Miao knew how to float on water but this was winter and the water in the Wanli Lake was biting cold. When one enters it, they would only feel that their entire body was a nice block and could only paddle a few times before feeling their whole body stiffen and become unable to move. The skinny and tall one was about to jump into the water to fish Shen Miao out. After all Shen Miao had information about the people in the secret chambers. But before he could make a move, there was a burst of an unknown bamboo cannon. When one raised one's head to look, the west side was lit by a firework. The situation has changed. The short one wiped the blood off his face and said, withdraw. Take her away first. The skinny tall one scolded and wanted to jump into the lake, but who knew that his body would jolt violently and then he saw two black cladded persons that unknowingly had already been standing on the head of the boat. Both of the black cladded persons had a gold embroidered eagle pattern sewn on their shoulders. The short one cried out, Moyu army, why is the Moyu army here? Before the two people recovered to their senses, the two black cladded persons already reached to the front and in a flash of silver. Both the short ones and the skinny and tall ones frightened looks stopped at that moment as they slowly fell down. In the lake, Shen Miao was still fiercely rummaging. From the words of the short one and skinny and tall one, they were not just the two black cladded persons and it seemed that there were forces behind him and those forces sounded quite powerful. Shen Miao had a kind of intuition beyond imagination that if she were to fall into both of their hands, 
she would be able to find a way out but if she were to end up with those forces, even if she were to die, the Shen family would never be able to find the murderer. But one did not expect that with this drastic jump that cut off her means of retreat, she would trap herself in a dead end. Seeing that the two black cladded persons did not come to save her even after a long time passed, could it be that she would die here in the ice cold lake? Her head started to feel heavy and a buzzing by her ear started to sound like she was sinking into a nice house. It was evident that the surface of the water was just in front and one could even see the lanterns floating downstream but one was unable to grab it, only see it. Just when her eyes were becoming unclear, she suddenly saw a figure swimming over from afar. That figure was rather vigorous and under the bright lights of the lake, it was as if one that had come down from the skies bringing the light to her as one swam. That person swam to Shen Miao and with a pull, clutched her waist and swam to the surface. In such a world of ice and snow, the lake was biting cold and it is difficult for one to swim, but he was able to swim comfortably even with an additional person. When one swam up to the front of the boat, he picked Shen Miao up and set her on the hold of the ship before flipping himself over. Shen Miao was choking on a few mouthful of water and when she got on board the ship, she had yet to turn herself over and could only held her throat to cough a number of times. But she saw the figure in front turn and look over. That person was also wet from top to bottom and there was no trace of the joking expression he previously had on his face as he looked at her with twisted brows. It was precisely Zi Jingxing. With the energy she was using to look at Zi Jingxing, Shen Miao saved the effort to be surprised. That two black cladded persons came because of Zi Jingxing, and it may be assumed that Zi Jingxing himself came to know of the news and thus rushed over. She used up her energy to lift herself up, and it was only then she saw there were two corpses on the hold of the boat. They were the skinny tall one and the short one, and from the hold walked out two black cladded persons and one of them walked over to Zi Jingxing's side and whispered something. Zi Jingxing waved his hand and those two persons left with the two bodies, and even wiped clean the boat of blood stains. Shen Miao did not bother to think about who those two persons were as even a fool could also guess that they were Zi Jingxing's people. She moved her body and felt that there was no part of her body that was not sore and in pain. She had been soaking in the icy cold waters for more than half a one equals one quarter of an hour, and it was so cold that she was trembling. Previously that skinny tall one threw her down a couple of times. Thus her back was in pain but where she felt the most pain was probably her calf. She lowered her head to look at her skirt and it was pasted onto her skin, and there was a blood red flower on the area of her calf mixing with the red embroidery on her skirt, making one unable to differentiate. That was caused by the skinny tall one's dagger. She was so cold and in pain that she was unable to say a single word. But it was Zi Jingxing who walked into the boat cabin. And since these exquisite sightseeing boats would come prepared with a furnace and clothes, he pulled out the furnace out from a wooden box and lit it before adding coal into it. As the furnace burned warmly, the boat swayed on the lake. Zi Jingxing glanced at Shen Miao before his lips suddenly formed a smile. I want to change clothes, you want to watch with your eyes? Shen Miao suddenly shut her eyes. At this moment her state of mind was in some confusion and Zi Jingxing still had the mood to joke around. One only heard a light chuckle following which was the rustling sounds of the changing of clothes. After a moment, Zi Jingxing's voice sounded, finished. When Shen Miao opened her eyes, Zi Jingxing was buckling the last button. He had changed into a deep black colored robe and had a big white fox cloak covering him that exuded a kind of cold but awe-inspiring feeling. A pair of black peach eyes stared at Shen Miao in a smile but not a smile. Do you also want to change? When one wore cold and wet clothes, one would catch a cold easily. Even if one was sitting by the burning stove to roast, it would require a number of shishans, one shishan equals two hours, to be fully roasted dry. One fear that if she were to wait till that time, she would have already be suffering from chills. With regards to her body, she had always cherished it. Coupled with the uncomfortable feeling of her entire body, she looked towards Zi Jingxing and calmly said, Is there any other clothing? Zi Jingxing got up and took out a set of clothes from the clothes bag on the wooden table. 
and said as he leaned against the wall, my subordinates sent me clothes and seeing that there are still some troubles currently around, one was not able to search female clothes for you. If you want to change, you can only change to mine. For an unmarried female, to change into a stranger's clothes, it would be an alluring tint when it gets spread out. Xin Miao looked towards Zi Jingxing and saw a nasty smile on his lips. She did not know if the situation was forced or deliberately staged. Shen Miao discovered that Zi Jingxing indeed had a special kind of power, as since from her rebirth she had faced everyone with the Empress Shen frame of mind. Even when facing Shen Kaiyu, she was unable to treat Shen Kaiyu as her eldest brother and something would have the feeling of protecting him. But on every encounter with Zi Jingxing, he would always try to distract Shen Miao with his vile actions and to be teased this much was something not experienced by Empress Shen before, but by a fifth Shen young lady who was naive to the sinister world. She took a deep breath in her heart before saying, give them to me. Her reply was a little unexpected to Zi Jingxing, thus he looked at her with doubts, you want to wear my clothes? Is there any other clothing here? Xin Miao asked. Zi Jingxing smiled and threw the clothes he held to her. Xin Miao caught them and after much tolerating she said to Zi Jingxing, request little Zi Marqui to turn around. When Zi Jingxing heard this, he sized her up as he looked at her from head to toe meaningfully. Currently Xin Miao's clothes were pasted onto her body. She was petite in size and undoubtedly revealed some youthful figure of a lady and the sorry appearance revealed a lovely attitude. Zi Jingxing said full of interest, little girl who is still wet behind the ears knows about embarrassment, do not worry, his gaze was fussy and criticizing, there is nothing at all and also nothing good to see. Finishing he sheekly turned around and did not even look at Shen Miao at all. Shen Miao's heart gave a slight relief as she picked up Zi Jingxing's clothes. It was a piece of an azure blue robe with the collar pressed snugly and the embroidery was excellent. Shen Miao subconsciously touched it. This kind of workmanship, she only enjoyed it when she was in the palace in her past lifetime. The rumors that the Marquis of Linen was rich enough to rival the country were indeed not false. She slowly took off the wet external and internal clothing, and used the damp clothes on the stove to clean her body of water before picking up Zi Jingxing's robes. Who knew that Zi Jingxing's robes were so complicated that she was unable to put them on properly? Not only that, the belt was entangled with her left calf. Her calf just had a dagger injury and previously it was not serious, but at this moment the flesh was indistinctive and looked somewhat scary. As the belt rubbed against the wound, Shen Miao sucked in a breath of cold air in pain and was unable to sit properly, leading to her falling onto the ground with a bang, also knocking over the teapot on the table. When Zi Jingxing heard the commotion, he immediately turned around to see Shen Miao falling onto the ground so he took a step forward to help her. Shen Miao was unable to stop and her entire body leaned into his embrace. The clothes were not properly worn and were hanging loose on her body as one's shoulder was exposed with damp hair, there was some charming appearance. No matter how calm she was, there was an instantaneous panic and helplessness. But it was Zi Jingxing that had his brows twisted as he held onto her leg and stared at the wound before speaking deeply. What happened? 